Hey y'all, trying to get Holly joined here. Give me just Hi. Oh, we do it. We're doing it. We're doing it live. I'm an elder millennial. <laughs> um, hey Holly. Hi Libby. How are you doing? Hello. Good how are you? Happy pub day oh, thank, to be on. Thank you. <laughs> it's a book. Um, ah. <laughs> the thing, the funny thing about publishing, well, there's a lot of funny things about publishing. Let me first, let me introduce myself and introduce Holly. Um, my name is Libby Burton. I am executive editor at Crown, which is an imprint, imprint of Penguin Random House. Um, and I did a lot of nonfiction books. This is decidedly the most beautiful book that I have edited <laughs> this year yeah. and probably in the next Oh, in the last like five years, let's find some good page. Um, the vibes, the vibes are excellent. I wish I was there, but I'm in an <laughs> office in Midtown. It's okay. Um, Holly, let me. You introduce yourself. I should have written an intro for you, but yeah, give the oh, give our okay. audience a little bit about you. Um, hello, everybody joining. Oh, thank you. I see someone says they're eagerly awaiting their order. Um, uh, anyone who's joining here who is following TFD probably knows me already, but my name is Holly Trantham. I'm the creative director of The Financial Diet, and I also wrote our new book, Beyond Getting By, um, which, uh, as Libby pointed out, is really stunning. It was designed by our co-founder, Lauren Berhage, who also designed the first book, uh, the first TFD book that was written by Chelsea, and it was illustrated by an illustrator based here in New York City, Cindy New. So it's like lovely i'm so happy with how it turned out and i'm so glad it's finally out <laughs> out in the world okay yeah. so i want to talk about i want to talk about book stuff i want to talk about the process of the book and making a book and then i also want to talk about the book itself and then also some of the stuff that you guys are doing at tfd so i want to start a little bit and i'm going to start with a confession which is <laughs> i've been working with you guys now for six years I worked on the first financial diet book, which is just simply called The Financial Diet. And this is something that I never wanted to admit um, to you all when I was working on it. But I learned so much editing that book. <laughs> like, I did not have an emergency fund savings account. I did not understand the difference between a 401k and an IRA. And I was just not which is also sort of like a little insider baseball. Listen, you don't have to be an expert on everything that you edit books on. You just have to know how to help translate what a book is saying for an audience. So I learned so much working on that book and I learned so much working on this book, which kind of came at the perfect point in my life in so many ways. Um, because this book, whereas that book was really sort of like straightforward, like, you know, finance 101, here's what you need to know to not be a dummy and not, you know, sort of make some simple mistakes. This book is looking at the whole picture of what your relationship to money is, what it should be, and what it can be. So tell me, Holly, like, just a little bit, like, where did you guys come up with the idea for this book and sort of, like, what inspired it? Yeah, so, I mean, I think, you know, I'm actually really happy to hear you learned a lot editing these books because I do think they are, you know, and I think TFD started out as, um, the kind the, a money media site and you know media company that's for people who don't necessarily know that much about money at least at the beginning at least when, you know when we're when we were first starting out on, on our early 20s it was started by our founder Chelsea as a personal blog to get better with money because she was historically bad with it um I think that so that was the first book that we had you know came out in 2018 um, it was all about a primer on personal finance and getting a good handle on your money. And this is what we call what comes next. It's not necessarily what comes next purely financially. Um, I think, you know, I do cover some, a, a little bit of, you know, investing, some savings stuff, some uh, refining your budget philosophy things. But really, this book was just sort of an evolve, like a, a showcasing the evolution of TFD as a brand and also like the ethos of TFD. And we've come so far since we first started 10 years ago this year. Um, and, you know, so I know, <laughs> and um, well, I think we're celebrating 10 years in August. Um, and, you know, uh, people who follow us on YouTube and follow us here on social know that we do a lot more than just um, personal 
you know, confessions about money, even though that's still a big part of TFD. We also do a lot of talking about money in a wider cultural context. Um, and that's what we were aiming to do with this book. So it's kind of taking these bigger cultural conversations we've been having, you know, there's stuff in here about Nepo babies, there's stuff about um, the student loan situ ongoing situation. Um, there's stuff about uh, <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow and the Kardashians and people yes. we are made to look up yeah. to and are supposed to look up to and, you know, debating whether or not those, those kinds of lives are actually aspirational. Um, and just basically, it's, I think of it as a cross between personal finance and like self-help because it's definitely much more about, you know, contextualizing your own life and your own money with, through these lenses, but also like, how are, how are you using it to live a life you actually want? How are you making, building a career that's actually fulfilling, not just because of what you do, but because of the time and resources it gives you outside of work. Um, and yeah, I think, and also, you know, there's a lot of talk about the girl boss phenomenon and yeah. reevaluating that and stuff. Oh, like, like, I mean, I should not tell this to all my authors, but I'm, this <laughs> is so like, every time I think about this book and I flip through this book and I like, remember us sort of like editing it and what we chose to put in and what we chose to highlight, I get so excited because I feel like each chapter is like a jumping off point of like a literal entire dinner I could have with a friend of mine. And the way oh. that I've always like thought of TFD and this book in particular is like, I'm having dinner with a friend of mine who is slightly more advanced in life in terms of like what she has achieved and sort of what she's figured out. And then, but also is just giving it to me like real. And I'm like, thank you. No one is doing that in my life, but you guys are doing that, which is fantastic. I think a real thing, because it, this book definitely is like in conversation with the political moment that we're living in and the social moment that we're living in. I think this idea of like the death of the girl boss. Um, I think you and I have both sort of built our careers in this time period where we were, it was so empowering to be able to do whatever you wanted to do and do it really well and sort of dedicate your entire life to it. But then we mm -hmm. kind of all woke up, I think, post pandemic being like, what the hell? <laughs> Um, like, what about the rest of our lives? What about our friends? What about our family? What about our communities? How do we want to serve those? Mm -hmm. And this book really sort of looks at how to think that through in a real pragmatic way. So that's a bigger sort of conversation that you can read this book and come out of feeling more informed about. But even things like this idea, like, so there's activities in this book, which is really cool. This is one of my <laughs> yeah. favorite, which you can't, it's, it's reversed for you guys, but uh, <laughs> your money beliefs. Um, and as you know, a like <laughs> white girl growing up in America in the odds, like a lot to be ashamed of, um, or like just like any woman growing up, a lot to be ashamed of, like, you know, from how you dress to what your body looks like, but also your money. And I think that you guys, TFD has opened up this conversation and we're one of the first and continue to be to say like, there is no shame necessary in this conversation and you're not going to change you're not going to improve unless you can sort of look at things straight and you know sort of eliminate shame from that relationship so i did this and oh I felt, felt a lot of feelings oh. <laughs> um and it's been really transformative so oh, i'm great. so grateful to that in so many ways um so yeah, okay, I know I jumped right into like the content of the book, but let's talk a little bit about, because you know, our audience is here at TFD and also sort of Crown Publishing, people interested in publishing. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about sort of the publishing journey for you and also the writing, the book journey. I guess, what was for you, because Chelsea wrote the, mostly wrote the, the first book, you wrote this book and you both have such amazing writing voices that are both funny and fun and wry, but also authoritative. Um, so what was the most surprising part for you in this process? Um, I mean, the most surprising part of the publishing process has been how small, how short a period of time it felt actually writing the book compared with all the other stuff that has gone along with writing the book. <laughs> Uh, yeah. From uh, finalizing a cover, which I know, it, Libby, you know how uh, much back and forth that had, um, and you know, getting getting through all of the copy edit phase, but all, then also just like starting all of the promotion and marketing stuff. It feels like the t I'm sure I spent more time actually writing it, but it was in such a comparatively short period of time that that feels like almost like 
it was almost the easiest part of the book. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the, it wasn't easy, but it was, you know, the almost the easiest part just because it took so much less mental energy after the fact <laughs> than, and everything else is kind of ongoing. Um, the, someone had asked what the book's called and it's, it's called beyond, I know this is backwards, but it's called beyond getting by, um, uh, the financial diet's guide to abundant and intentional living. Um, uh, and, and also Chelsea did write the intro or the forward and, the, um, a different chapter on our four day work week in this book. So you do get to see our voices next to each other. Um, and you know, we work together very closely. I've worked, uh, behind the scenes on TFD content for almost eight years. Um, and, and, uh, you know, sometimes it can feel like Chelsea and I are one mind mm -hmm. in, 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 kind of, in terms of context and content. And like, so writing this felt what was actually surprising how much I was like, I still felt like when I read that, read it back, I still very much, you know, two different voices because we're different people. Yeah. Um, but obviously same TFD ethos because we wouldn't work together if we didn't believe the fundamentally, we, we, everybody else can be fundamentally believe the same uh, financial, have the same financial values. Um, so that was really surprising. Also, um, I did the audio book, which was a really yeah. interesting, fun process. And that was um, quite surprising how tiring it was. Um, I didn't know, I didn't like expect that. <laughs> Um, oh my God, shout out right. to professional voice yeah. actors. Like, it's <laughs> so exhausting. And I've never done a whole book. I've done sort of, like, brief presentations. And I'm just like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is and so I, exhausting. Especially people who have to do fiction because um, I, you know, the director was was wonderful to work with. She, she was great. But uh, she was trying to get me to do, the, when I had interview sections in this, trying to get me to full of different energy. <laughs> for different people and I was just like oh I can't do I can't do a character I don't know about <laughs> so. oh my god I know you have so many skills Holly I would not expect you to also do voices um <laughs> I like I want to totally push the audiobook on this because it is a book and granted well you know it's the kind of book and I don't know if other people do this I do this I'm a book nerd obviously I will buy a hard copy of a book and then I will also buy the audio edition because I want to listen to it and sort of consume it when I'm commuting, um, when I'm walking around. Um, but then I also want to have sort of resources that way. I've done that with all of Emily Oster's books uh, and it's been very productive <laughs> in my life. So this is, I think, a perfect book. You um, you want to have this because you want to sort of do the exercises and you want to see the beautiful illustrations. But some of the bigger, higher level conversations and ideas in here, I think, um, you it's something that you might want to listen to and think about so i think it's a good candidate for a double purchase um <laughs> as well as it is a beautiful book that makes a great gift um i think for someone think so. anyone yeah anyone in like a woman in particular a young woman in my life it's funny i gave the first financial diet book to my sister uh who's now also in her 30s so i'm gonna give this one to my cousin who is now sort of, um, actually no, I'll give it to my sister and my cousin. What the hell, both of them. Um, Cause it's a beautiful <laughs> book that just says like, I care about what your relationship is to money. And I think that you are a thoughtful person who should be engaged in this. It's also a bit of a feminist act, I think, to sort of prioritize a woman's relationship to money, which is a whole other conversation. And I think like integral to what TFT is doing in a lot of ways and almost besides the facts and all of this, but still in 2024, um, I think that's true. It's still feminist to sort of like take on like your own finances. I know you guys have been sort of having some conversations about that um, on the social mm -hmm. sort of divorce and sort of like what that does. Um, yeah, to a some zesty, uh, zesty responses. Yes. What was the, what? What has been? Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of strong opinions in that arena, I guess. <laughs> and I don't know if we want to get yeah. into this here because I actually haven't read all of them. But um, as someone who's like, again, I'm an elder millennial, so a lot of people in my life are getting divorced, and it is a very yeah. very complicated thing. And I think if you can take money out of that then it makes the emotional process that much easier. Uh, or at least you can sort of like simplify the money and that starts out, you know, at the beginning of a relationship. So um, yeah, it's, it's a lot. But this book will sort of give you that framework of thinking through all of those things, uh, no matter like where you are in that process. Um, so, okay, I wanted to go back to this idea. And I think this comes, comes up to a lot of my um, authors have an online presence and 
like create a lot of content for online. Um, what was it like sort of writing something that you know you wanted it to last for many years versus like you're kind of used to having like a weekly turnover? Like what was that process like? Um, I mean, we did. So I did still want to make it for the moment. Um, that's why we do have conversations about, you know, the girl boss, the, um, the student loan crisis, the, uh, crypto crash. That's something we talk about. Oh um, God, in the book. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I wanted to contextualize everything in the moment we're living in, but I think that everything is, I mean, I think everything that we talk about is long lasting enough in, in effect that it's going to be relevant for years. But then there's also, I think all of the ideas in the book are very evergreen um, about, for, you know, creating, building this life you love and using money to do it, even if that's sometimes saying no to money to build, to buy yourself more time. Um, I think, I think the workbook aspect of it, and I, I, we touched on this briefly you know, earlier, but I do think the workbook aspect of it is just like something you can ideally turn back to again and again. Maybe you come back to it with different colored markers every year or something. Yes. Oh my <laughs> so God, you can I like would love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Yeah. Exactly. And I think, you know, creating online content, like we have to kind of you have to kind of insert yourself into conversations that are already happening or start them, but that's a lot harder um to do. So I think that when when we're thinking about um what we're making on our own on our platforms it's like it's a lot quicker it's a lot it's intentional but still you know much uh, much less thought put into it just because it's a shorter format for the most part i would say that our video essays though are more similar to uh the book the, the book writing process than the other content we've done back when we were doing shorter videos and more more frequently or um all, you know social content and stuff like that um i i think that what we've pivoted to this model that um we're all really loving on youtube where we're doing one uh longer video essay hosted by chelsea a month um instead of weekly shorter videos hosted by her we still have you know the podcast every week and we have other series here and there but um i think that the that and writing the book at the same time in the same year they weren't really overlapping we had i had finished the book almost a year ago now but um uh do, doing all making those changes and moving towards a more intentional sort of process for all of our content has been really great and also showed me a lot about what I do and don't like about other shorter form content, but it all has a place, so. Oh my God, um, I am so interested in that in so many ways. And I think it like follows the philosophy. I was gonna come back and sort of think about that idea of writing something that you wanna last for a long time and yet you want it to also feel like of the moment. And there's great writing in here about like fast fashion and like mm -hmm. honestly god like reporting that you've done about sort of like because like to dig into fast fashion is just it's terrible for everyone and everything yeah. um and to sort of change your relationship to consumerism in that, that way um i think is really powerful and is a powerful move and also feels very intimidating especially if you're not making a lot of money sort of saying like how can i possibly invest in like you know something like clothing specifically and yet I also want to sort of look like I'm up to date and sort of part of the conversation and it's interesting that sort of feels like what you guys did with your content in certain ways which is to say that you like sort of evaluated like how do we make content that's actually can stand the test of time as opposed to this sort of like quick disposable um yeah stuff that that we're all consuming all the time but is it like edifying us right mm -hmm. um yeah, so, so I, I'm very excited for like the future of TFC and sort of like what you guys are going to produce and sort of what you're going to be, how you're going to be in the conversation in that way for a long time going forward, which is thrilling. I can't believe 10 years. That's amazing. Like, no. also, just like show me a, uh, show me a, a startup or a sort of a, an online um, platform that has made it 10 years and is still so relevant in the conversation that speaks to, I think you guys' thoughtfulness your relevancy and also your authority in so many ways, which is really, really refreshing. Um, oh, thank you. Well, let me like, in terms of the book itself and sort of, um, yeah, surprising pieces. I feel I'm thinking about like what people can keep connecting to. I think Chelsea's chapter on the 
four day work week. Um, I think it's going to get a lot of, it's going to get a lot of attention. And I think people are going to be very interested in that. You know, every so often I'll, I'll just see a friend who's like reposting, um, um, Bernie Sanders, his advocacy mm -hmm. for the, for the four day yeah. fourth week. And I'm like, he's out there fighting the good fight. Um, yeah. just briefly tell me sort of the, the decision process that CFD went through to like get to the four day week work week and like how it's been going for you guys. Yeah. I mean, that was really, really a trickle down moment um i would say also chelsea was in here a second ago and um she said she wanted she said reminded us she's on the audiobook too which was really nice because i didn't have to uh, em try to emulate her voice for a full chapter um uh so so basically i mean we had always done summer fridays and we didn't really see the business suffering from doing that um and also you know our ceo and founder or co-founder uh wanted to do it person her, for herself and so we just made it uh, an experiment um i can't even remember how long the experiment was supposed to last i think a few months but then we just decided to keep it forever because we didn't see we didn't see any, any real reason not to we were still making enough money we and um we were just as productive we were getting everything done um i think it would be really difficult to go back to not having it at this yeah. point i obviously some weeks are different than others you know right now with the book coming out and stuff i have a lot more going on than i do other weeks um but i think the the whole you know the spirit of it is that you make up your time when you spend when you have a project or something that's taking up more of your time and energy you make up for it later and everybody is like oper operating on good faith that we're all yeah. um getting work done in the time we have to and then you know there's been times when someone's been overwhelmed and we've had to shift around responsibilities and stuff like that that happens but um we've you know because we have this kind of open dialogue about it we're able to figure it out um and i really do hope that more companies adopt it i think that you know people are all different some people argue that it's not a good model for a lot of people um maybe that's true i think for this type of job though if there's really no reason it especially when it's already so flexible we you know we put out content every day but it's not like we we're it's not nothing we're doing is life and death nothing yeah. is um so timely that we can't have a three-day weekend you know i think um i think if people if companies can't do it especially media companies that's a staffing issue that's not uh that's not, not a productivity oh, or yeah issue. So, um, yeah, I, I really, I, you know, I hope more companies do it. I love Bernie, obviously, but I <laughs> very skeptical of that ever actually gaining traction I know. <laughs> uh, I know. On, I know. on a policy level, at least right now, but you know, maybe I mean, hopefully one day. <laughs> someone could put it out there. I mean, I feel the same way. It's interesting, like working in publishing, which has traditionally had this sort of summer Friday mentality, which is great, yeah. but I think everyone sort of woke up again, sort of post pandemic, just sort of saying like, wait a second, like we are all adults and we are like accountable to the work that we do. If we get the work done, like yeah. one, it doesn't matter where we do it. Two, if we can get it done within four days and have a, a different, um, you know, sort of a work life balance, I think that would benefit everyone. Um, I yeah. doubt my CEO is watching this, but if he is, Neil, <laughs> read Chelsea's chapter, I'll send you a copy. Um, because I do, I think it just sort of instills, especially in sort of a white collar job, this idea of like, you're an adult, you can get this done. Um, I trust you to get this done. Let's have good faith. And I think that also just sort of evokes um, a sense of responsibility that is really um, yeah. empowering to a lot of workers. I know I have friends in the service industry who are like, mm -hmm. what about us? Um, yeah. Which that's a whole other conversation. Um, Bernie is not yeah. pretty there, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I will say, I do think that um you know people see like this is never going to happen and my husband used to say he would never work remotely like they would never they would just never let them and then obviously it took a pandemic and like yeah. ho hopefully that's not going to happen but i do think that like because now he can work remotely he they have hybrid um and i you know never say never, never. for any of it i do think that, um the food service Services one part and tipped workers, people who are hourly. That's like obviously a very different conversation, and that's. But frankly, that though that's like a that's a wage 
that's a wage set, wage stagnation con conversation too. Because totally. if they were making enough if hourly work, workers were making enough hourly, they could maybe choose to only work four days a week. Exactly. Um, exactly. And yeah, that's not happening. So yeah, it's it's an ongoing conversation. But I'd say the way yeah. that Chelsea lays it out in this book, I think for anyone who's interested, who might work for a small company and where you have an opening for a conversation, like read this book uh read all of it but read chelsea's chapter and sort of see what you can take away from that and in terms of this idea of never say never um my husband was responsible for changing the paternity leave policy at his company um which is also just incredible that's so cool oh my god <laughs> and like again ridiculous that in you know 2022 they didn't have one but um he advocated that's our Yes, exactly. It's really important. <laughs> so never, never say never. And also, I think this book, in addition to sort of like clarifying maybe what your relationship to your own money is and your own sort of earnings, empowering you to also sort of see places where change is possible, um, mm -hmm. which is the greatest gift that you can give anyone. Um, so I'm excited for people to read this book. I'm excited for people to get like excited by it and sort of see what is possible. Yeah. Again, we don't want to pandemic to sort of have to change the way things are but since we're here um being a worker in any way shape or form not necessarily so beholden to a hierarchical power structure that has sort of kept us in a certain way so that's exciting it's revolutionary and beautiful mm -hmm. um i should have offered this in the beginning but if anybody had any questions i know um there might be be if anyone has any questions that come up i think holly and i are totally game to answer any of them um in the meantime i'll say holly what are you guys at the cfd office talking about this week which i'm sure you're talking about um national book day yes um <laughs> yeah what are you guys talking about this week beyond the book like what sort of stuff um is top of mind at the cfd office i mean uh, to be quite honest with you, I think we're all most excited about this Challengers movie coming out. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, where I, I, I have a date with my husband plan. We're going to get burgers and then go see that um, oh. on Friday. And I'm, I am so excited for this book to come out. I'm so excited for, we have a celebration tonight. Olivia will be there. It's really exciting. But I'm so excited for Brent to see that movie. <laughs> amazing is there any buzz about it like are the reviews good are they bad or they haven't even started yet because it comes out friday i'm going in i'm not looking i'm going so, in i just was so excited by the trailer i'm I'm actually making myself go and blind i do I, see someone had a question though oh, what, what was it i am i am such a newbie at this should we see a question um, <laughs> someone asked for me what chapter was the most challenging for you to write and why good question um i think that the most challenging chapter to write it's probably the one on the crypto crash just because uh, it's a lot of information. It's a lot of information that was I wanted to not make dry and yeah. boring. And yeah. um, also, like, it's not like I'm an expert on it either. Um, it does have I did interview some real experts for that one. Um, and I think that they did a really great job explaining uh, Richard Coffin, one of them um, from the Plain Bagel, did a really wonderful job explaining, like, for anyone to understand, like, why it's not aspirational or ideal to try to get in on the ground floor of these big new unregulated types of investments and like in, get on the ground floor of tech because um, he is explain he explains it really great in the book better than I can but um, just at the aggregate level the, no most people do not make any money and yeah. often most of the time lose money yeah. on those it's only the few that th the top that make a lot of money that get the news stories so cool. um, I that was a really difficult chapter to write, but it was um, also still fun, you know, and I, I loved everybody I got to interview for it, for this book. The I whole will co-sign um, the sort of like, that chapter is like a critical primer on crypto. And I feel like, you know, this time last year, uh, everyone was just like losing their minds about crypto. And it sort of has seen like it's faded away, but I, it's not fading away. And I think it's an, still like an integral part of the conversation in so many ways. And if you, whomever reader sort of missed the train on the Vox explainer, then like get this book and Holly with the help of um, the plain bagel will like explain it to you. So you can actually, you know, <laughs> offer some insight at a cocktail party and sort of wrap your mind around it because the ways in which, you know, the blockchain is going to sort of affect us going forward is, is 
it's big and it's, it's something to think about. So um, yeah. that's another great, this, this book can also offer you sort of like those snippets of understanding of things that, um, that you need. And, you know, the T, it's TFT. So there's authority there. Um, I had a question. I saw a question about a book tour. Holly, do you want to tell them about, you guys have an excellent event actually happening tomorrow that's interactive, yeah. I believe. Do you want to give a little plug um, for that? Yeah. So we unfortunately don't have a book tour planned right now. They are very expensive to put on. Uh, and we really can't, we can't do it unless we, we can't justify it unless we get it sponsored. However, we are doing a digital event with a books, uh, independent bookstore called Book Passage tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, um, which will be a lot of fun. I'm going to do a little tutorial and workshop at the beginning about creating an intentional savings plan and how to best use this book. And then just opening up to Q&A. So definitely join that. Your ticket includes um, your book uh, uh so it'll get shipped to you, or if you happen to be near a book passage location, I think there's two um, in California. If you happen, happen to be near there, you can pick it up. But um, yeah, we'll be doing dig that digital event. We'll definitely be doing more digital events, especially if you're a society member uh, with TFD. We'll be definitely doing um, more for members. And uh, <laughs> definitely uh, nudge them. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I will add to that. Uh, it's a great way. The book passage event tomorrow is a great way to support an independent bookstore. Yes. So if you buy that book from there, and if you already pre-ordered the book, and you also want to support TFD and have an amazing gift, as I said, my sister and cousin. I'm gonna think of other young women in my life that I can give to <laughs> young men, but you know, young women. Um, yeah, it's an awesome gift. And like, how often? Also, you know, I'm a book editor. I'm constantly giving books to people, and I think that they're probably annoyed by it by now. But this is actually a book that I would be so, I'm so excited to give because it's beautiful and yeah. it's usable. And it also, again, it sort of empowers the reader to um, just like take a part of their lives seriously that they might not have previously. And I think that's like the biggest gift that you can give someone. Um, and yeah, you know, you obviously I have uh, older sibling vibes. Um, but it's something I can just sort of share with my sister without telling her exactly what to do. Um, <laughs> so yeah, well, Holly, this has been awesome and like wonderful to speak with you digitally. And I'm excited to see you tonight in the flesh as we celebrate yes! uh, this amazing book. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. And thank you Someone for asked... tuning in. Oh, question. Sorry, Libby. Yeah. Someone asked, speaking of Libby, uh, someone asked if this will be available on the Libby app. It'll depend on if it's available with your library, right? So if you, if it's not available through your library, request it and they should hopefully order it. I saw someone comment on one of our posts earlier that they had put in a request of the library and it was already available. So just request it. Totally. Um, that's a great ask. Libby app, big fan of the Libby yeah. app over here. Um, <laughs> Me too. I use it all the time. I know it's, it's, amazing but yeah or your local library also it's a great book you could you could check it out from the library take pictures of yeah. interactive stuff and yeah. then you can sort of do that on your own so um or you great. Use the library's yeah. copy machine exactly fantastic <laughs> um and just visit your local library because they're amazing yeah. um mm -hmm. all right guys thank you all this has been super fun i hope everyone has an excellent day happy national book day happy beyond getting by pub day um yeah it was great keep asking questions and being curious and you know sharing sharing all the good stuff with the women and the men in your life um <laughs> holly this has been a delight um congratulations and i'll see you later see you later bye all right bye everyone bye.